I'm resident of color with the YouTube Joel Saints, joined by my friends Christine Pierce, Kara Tilly's from Between the Shadows. Hey, guys. Shadows <laughs> podcast. I have a question for you about the widows of Widow Seal. So, Rachel Comstock, Abigail Tolliver, and Margaret Finley are our three widows. They jump to their death on Widow Seal. Not at the same time, mind you, but what all three of them have one thing in common. <laughs> They're all they were all married to sailors. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. really interesting. So here's my first question. Do you because the Leviathan arc are usually Leviathan arcs require sacrifice? Do you think the widows were the sacrificial lambs of the Leviathan? Ooh. Here we go again. Don't I know. ask the best questions. I know. <laughs> uh you know what? I had never thought of that, but it completely makes sense because the way the Leviathans operate, yeah, I, something like that, like a human sacrifice, just totally seems right up their alley. It wouldn't surprise me, honestly. But also, I mean, I, I always kind of like to go back to the cursed grounds that they're on. Yeah. And it's just what happened. Yeah. I know that's very bland, but no. it, it's true, though. I mean, but I'm, yes, I could understand the vibe of things too. I said arc. I meant to say altar. So yeah. Leviathan altar usually altars require sacrifice. At least that's what I've been told by most 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 uh, priests. Which I'm sure they would know. Uh, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I remember. Good. I remember uh, when I was in when I was in Catholic school. A priest told me he goes. He goes. Do you believe in God or in the devil? I said, I believe in God. He goes, you sort of need to believe in both to understand the, the evil that we're fighting here. He goes, and by the way, he goes, try not to be late to church. They really frown on that around here. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so, that's my church story. But with the with the widows of Widows Hill, I find it interesting how we first hear about them. We first hear about them through Roger talking to Victoria on top of Widow's Hill, and she's yeah. he's telling her about the legends. He he says that they used to come up here and mourn their their dead their loved ones, mm -hmm. and then when Jeremiah Collins, as he says, it told them to leave, that they couldn't come up here no more. And she, Victoria says that's awful, but he goes, "No, nah, Miss Winters, they never left." When and he's meaning when they jump to their death, their ghost stayed here. Um, yeah. Now here's an interesting part, Roger. I, I love me some Roger Collins. I know you ladies do too. Yes, so, <laughs> is Roger right here? Do you think it's Jeremiah or do you think it's Joshua who tells them to get going? Or is who who do you think tells the widows to beat it off a of widow's hill? For sure, off the bat, I always thought Joshua. I, and I did too, and and bec because because when we meet Jeremiah in 1795, he is so nice. I mean, he's like yeah. he's a gentleman, you know. Especially with you know Vicky acting as that shit as she did, and he was just he was so nice to her. He was like like Barnabas and jo um, Jeremiah were like the cut above. Um, but but Joshua was so callous, so cold to everyone and everything, like yeah. like was incapable of love. And he kind of admitted that himself. He was like, I've never I've never been able to show emotion or have emotion and you know eventually, you know, off topic, but that's pretty basically what saved him from the family curse that Angelique put on the yeah. house. Yeah. So I mean, based on the information that we have, I would have said Joshua every time. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Too. I don't think this is Lewis Edmonds' is Roger Collins telling a lie. I think he's just telling something, a story he's been repeated over and over again right. through, down, through the generations. And I also think he's going... Victoria Winters is a victim of this, too, in 1795. She's taking the Collins family history book as gospel. And Roger yeah. does, too, to a degree. <laughs> we all know. Well, you can't quite do that. Yes, because um, yeah. the Collins family history book has accuracy issues. Yeah, that's right about some things, but not about everything. And yeah. with the widows of Widows Hill, they say Joshua or they say Jeremiah. 
I'm I'm sort of wondering if their deaths happened when maybe Josh was even a kid. Because I think honestly their their deaths happened the how in seventeen ninety five the house is still being somewhat constructed, but it's almost it's more near completion than what it's supposed to be. And I think that's because Vicky of Vicky going back. Right. And I'm not I'm not I swear this is going to lead to a question. Um <laughs> But do you guys think with with well that's a question. Do you think with Vicky going back, it altered certain timeline events of how like when the house was built exactly? You know, I am certainly open to that because I think Vicky going back to the past, I think changed a lot of things. And I think there are things that happened because she was there as opposed to how things happened if Phyllis Wick had stayed put. Yeah. And we've had discussions on this on, on, on our podcast too, that, that Vicky being there, I believe changed some things in the timeline. You know, I, I don't think it was a, a cookie cutter of what happened to Phyllis Wick or what happened to the family while Phyllis Wick was there. I think that Vicky being there changed a lot. And it wouldn't surprise me if she maybe expedited the house being built, you know, or, yeah. or you yeah. know. And I also kind of thought that if the, if the switch hadn't happened with Phyllis and Vicky, I feel like Phyllis wouldn't have, had, wouldn't have been fought for or fighted for herself like Vicky had yeah. and was fought for. Like Vicky really made a um, convincing argument, even I as agree. crazy as it sounded. I agree. And how much many people still didn't believe her, but just who she is in general, even right. not knowing who she really is. like. Right just gave that air off about herself that you wanted to protect her or I, believe her. I agree. She was such a good person. But I, I feel I like, agree. I kind of feel like Phyllis Wick, you know, they, they would have arrested her, hung her, and that was the end. Yeah, yeah. And I things would have stayed as the way they were going. I think, I think you're but, right. I, I think you're right about that. And yeah. I know it's totally off topic, but I, I like to think that Phyllis Wick didn't put up a fight. Or she didn't. Right. She didn't get as much a fight as Vicky got yeah. from from Peter from herself. I don't. I don't think she was as feisty and and strong as Vicky. I so, agree. Uh, agree. but but back on topic. I, I think I think Vicky's presence there and and the impact that she had on seventeen ninety five. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if yeah. her being there expedited the the, the build of the house. The build of the house and. Mm-hmm. Two colors being shown. Yeah, you know, or the, I, or the know. curse happening any faster. You know, uh, you know. I, I, yeah. So yeah, I'm. I'm. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to bet that Phyllis Wick's journey. There's a lot not recorded about Phyllis Wick's Agreed. trial and how she went. They say Barnabas says she was hung as a witch, but I'm sort of wondering if she was accused of murder and witchcraft. Maybe they blamed her for... Barnabas says that Sarah died of illness after her doll went missing. You know this in the 1795 art. It's not her doll that goes missing. She she thought she saw Barnabas and she goes out. Yes. Maybe in Phyllis Wick's art, maybe, maybe, yeah, Barnabas did mend the doll but when it went missing, they accused, they found it in Phyllis's room, and that's what she gets initially arrested for. I'm wondering that. I never thought of it that way. But yeah. Me, like, me either, but yeah. it, it's like that's what's weird about dark chat is like I do. Th- they talk about how the past keeps repeating itself. I'm not so sure it repeats itself. It may be it repeats the changes that got made. Like yes. yeah. There's a timeline where there's Phyllis Wick who didn't get who didn't switch places with Vicky. And then there's now the timeline that Victoria switched places. Mm. So it's like it's constantly changing. And then there's Barnabas who goes back and changes it even more. Right. Because um, nobody knows how to fix things like our buddy Barnabas unless it's <laughs> in heaven. Right. Uh, yeah. Which is track record's not great there. What, yeah. did, what did you think of the legend of Widow's Hill itself? Here's these three women, they jump to their death. But there's all there's been prophesized a fourth widow that will join them who will who will jump. What did you first think about it when you heard about it? 
I, I'm sorry, did you have no, a thought? No, you go okay. ahead, that's cool. <laughs> so, so we hear about the, the legend of Widow's Hill pretty early on in the series, and I think, you know, the show is already mysterious when it opens up, you know, right. and, 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 you know, after, you know, it's the, the three episode hook, you know, that's what I, I, I give it three episodes before I decide if I'm going to stay hooked or not. But we hear about it, I think, within those first three episodes. And, yeah. and just to hear, just to hear the way Roger goes on about it, like, you can tell, you can tell that this story was handed down. Like, this is a story he heard in his childhood, and his dad probably heard it in his childhood. And it, he tells it with such conviction Ooh. that it, you know, it gives me chills when I hear it, you know, yeah. it's like these three widows, are you listening, Miss Winters? They haven't left. Listen, you know, you can hear the whispers and it's just like, whoo, it's like a nice ghost story. It's like a classic ghost story. And I, I loved it. I right. Loved it's it. not so much <laughs> magical or witchcraft. No. It's just ghosts. It's like an old sailor story. Yeah. And I, I, I love it, you know, and, and I loved it. And, and I loved how it kind of affected Vicky too. Was, yeah. Like, like she she's come for answers and she, you know, gets gets the story about the widows, you know, first off the bat, you know, and so there's more mystery surrounding where she's at. I, I don't know. I love it. I, I love it so much. And but, when we get to that question, unless this is the question, I have a theory about the fourth widow. But okay. <laughs> what's your theory? Please let us. I, you, know, you know, we all want to think maybe, because especially the way they tried to play it out, like I think it was with Angelique when she was getting her to think about death and everything. Right. They want you to go ahead and think with them that it could be Elizabeth. Right. I think it was Naomi. You do? Because Naomi did die Yeah. on the ground. Elizabeth stayed. Elizabeth, she lived. True. And died of natural causes as far as I know. But I think it, it could have been or should have been would have been Naomi if things had gone naturally. I think so because Naomi didn't die a natural death. I mean, she did, but you know, well, I mean, she, she died. You know what I'm trying to yeah, say? Yeah, she like, died prematurely. Yeah. Well, that's like, the sad death. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too. When you look at Naomi's headstone, the date initially is later. So again, her death is lied upon too because Joshua puts it as that. Naomi didn't die in 1790, whatever. She didn't die till like later in the 1800s. Yeah. But he puts a lie, but it's hard to tell. Like, what would have her initial death be if she wouldn't have been poisoned? Would she have jumped from Widow's Hill? Because yeah. I'm like, we all know she loved Joshua, but she lost her her daughter. She lost her son. I mean. <laughs> Living at that point could feel like hell for her. Yeah. Yes. I mean, while she was still alive, I can imagine in her being in her shoes. I mean, she already felt like a widow. Right. In a way. Like right. and I think I kind of think felt, yeah. I, I kind of think that's why even though Paul said her Stoddard wasn't dead, we didn't know that when Liz attempted to jump. Yeah. The couple times she tried to jump. And but I don't know. I, I think I think that's why they, you know, they win Elizabeth because she's practically a widow. I mean, Paul is gone. Yeah. You know, and and he might as well be dead to her, except you know, except when he comes back for the Leviathan. But up until that point, you know, Paul Stoddard is non-existent. You know, we don't think of him. We think of Liz as a single older matriarch who, you know, yeah. will probably never be married. And yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But 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 the fourth, if there's a prophecy, my my theory on it. It could have been if the show had gone on longer and hadn't gotten canceled. I feel like maybe it could have been Carolyn because yeah. she became a widow shortly after she was married. Yeah. And, you know, she only married the one time she married Jeb. She kind of and, became an old bat. Type, yeah. Type of I know. Old lady. <laughs> I know. Little bit I know. Of loony. <laughs> but I feel like, well, and I mean, she was alive in 1995 because of the events that had happened because of Judy Zachary. But if, if things, if that hadn't happened, I feel like, I feel like Carolyn could have been that fourth. Yeah. That's but a good theory. Definitely. I don't know. I think too, that I'm sort of wondering if the events, because that's the thing, the events of 1970 that lead to, when they come back to, when Barnabas and Julia come back from 1995 and they try to tell everybody, hey, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and nobody's believing them at first. Right. And when Carolyn meets um, 
Seb uh, Shaw. Sebastian Shaw. Yeah, Sebastian Shaw. I really, she sees Jeb, and no wonder. I mean, it's Christopher Penrock, obviously. Right. And he right. he tells her he goes no I'm I'm not who you think I, no I'm not him you know he's very honest with her about that right. but you know she I think it like when they come I could see her as a widow mm -hmm. because that's a, that's the thing when you get into the legend of widows hill the three women they were married to their lovers right. right I don't count Josette because she's a mulligan she she. She did. She was under a spell. <laughs> Love me some Josette, but she was under a spell. Um, sorry, Joe, I'm plugging in the computer. Sorry. <laughs> it's, all right. it's all right. It's all right. Um, yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So I'm. Um, I like the fact that Josette, when with her death though, like because she's the most famous. Like Widows Hill is known is known for the three widows. Right. But its most famous jump uh, person who died is Josette. Right. Um, now, survivors have been an interesting uh, uh, thing. We have Adam, who who has got the best cannonball ever. Um, yes. <laughs> so, and then there's the head of Judah Zachary, which got thrown off and still managed to survive. Right. So, <laughs> he, what did you think of Adam living? How shocking was that? You know, oh my gosh. I Adam mean, surviving. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I mean, it, you don't really understand superhuman strength until something like that happens. Until you survive a fall off of Widow's Hill. But I still didn't think he could survive that. Like, right. I mean, it was it's pretty brutal. Like sharp rocks at the bottom of a tall cliff. It's not like people go diving off this hill. Yeah. You know, it's not like, you know, it's not like it's, I mean, it's not like it's deep water. It's all rocks down there. And it's like, it's. I mean, he came out not even with like a broken arm as far as I know, right? Yeah, he got a scratched up face. Bumps and, and bruises. I mean, he, he fell or jumped off of Widow's Hill and was walking. To, it, not even, not even harmed, just like walking. After what I mean, it was shocking, honestly. I, I, I mean, I, I mean, I obviously Dr. Lang knew exactly what he was doing with 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 Adam and giving him super. You know, we again we had this discussion on our show. I'm like, did did Dr. Lang mean to make him so strong, or was it just a happy after what, effect? You yeah, know? like what made him so super strong? I don't know. It might have like been that, that's where like was. the supernatural something comes in with it. Maybe not yeah. just building a body from parts. Something supernatural came in with that. Yeah. In my, in my like friends. Superman. <laughs> I think in some weird, weird way, Barnabas's affliction is in him, but he's not a vampire. So he's got the he's got this supernatural strength and this supernatural ability to take a lot of punishment and pain. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So he I understand that. Right. Basically, he's Frankenstein's monster. Right. Okay. You know, in every way. So they're giving him that they are giving him Barnabas's powers without having the oh he has to drink blood. He can't be out in the sun. He can do all that. Like he he can be out in the sun. He doesn't have to drink blood, but he also has the ability to take a lot of punishment and just falling off with us. It was I wouldn't expect him to live, but hey, he's alive. Right. Right. It's like the only way to hurt Adam is to hurt Barnabas because they're Basically, just, <laughs> yeah. but if you hurt Adam, Barnabas obviously wasn't very affected because when he fell off of Widow or jumped off of Widow's Hill, Barnabas wasn't affected. I was going to say he, that, he could just like, feel that Adam was still alive. But as far as the pain goes, as far as being harmed, Barnabas didn't feel anything. Like when Barnabas was trapped in the coffin in the ground, Adam couldn't breathe. But right. it's like Barnabas didn't get the effects of Adam, but Adam got them from Barnabas. Right. No type. And and when Adam was shot, Barnabas wasn't hurt. Yeah. So I, I don't um, know. I, I think. But because, maybe because he's the life source, not the other way around. It, that's what I was just going to say. Yeah, because Barnabas is the life force. So maybe that's why Adam feels the pain, but it's not vice versa. <laughs> so. What if, what if the prophecy of the widow's hill is wrong? We are told it's a widow that's supposed to be. What if it's a widower? What if it's a man? Oh, good question. 
So my my widower who would have jumped would have been Barnabas. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He comes back from having lost Angelique forever. He's he's been miserable pretty much forever. He's lost he's lost two loves in his life. Yeah. With Josette and now Angelique. Maybe he just went to Widow's Hill and said, you know what? Screw it. Enough. <laughs> and I, I've, I've had enough. <laughs> I'm checking out. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. But, and after all that, I, I can't blame him. <laughs> I mean, nobody's been through what Barnabas has. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It would have been interesting to see if he would have did it, but I don't know. Um, what did you What did you think of, um, oh, my God, we have so many uh, deaths to cover. Well, <laughs> Not next, but what did you think of Beth Chavez? Her oh. death off with his head. Oh my God. Beth was so tormented and so, so wronged in her life, you know. Used, and, used and abused. Uh, used and abused and, and, and heartbroken and overall just treated like crap, you know. But and loyal to a fault. But loyal to a fault. And to, to see her meet her in that way. I kind of expected that kind of from her because of all the hell she had been through. But also it was like, girl, th- this girl deserves better. <laughs> I guess it, oh, overall, I guess I'm happy that she took herself out and nobody took her out. Yeah. Like, cause but, that would have made me even more sad. Honestly, if somebody would have gotten her, yeah. but she was that strong to, into herself. I feel like the poison that she tried to take before May have been a better end, a less painful end, but yeah, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but she, she's backing away from Quentin because she still thinks it's Patope in Quentin's body, right? And he, Quentin, is helpless. He doesn't want to run after her and grab her and cause her fall, but she just, she just goes anyway, and he can't believe it. He's heartbroken over this. Here's a guy that's lost his son, one of his children. Now yeah. he's lost a woman he's loved. It's right. like, here's the thing though, too. And shout out to our mutual friend Patrick McCray. He brought this up too. That Beth, you know, you have Jameson who names his daughter Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. You know, which is no cool. Way. It's it's not coincidence. It's it's done on purpose. That is very interesting. You know, it, I agree with that, that it's because he really, he knew how much Beth went through and really did for the family. Yes. Um, yeah. that, that's the interesting thing, too. Like, her death, though it's not dramatized the way maybe Josette's is, yeah. her death is important in a different way because David, or no, sorry, yeah, Jameson, <laughs> really cared for her. And it's yes. easy to see why considering how much she did. Yes. Mm. But, but I have mm. never thought about that before. But thanks, Patrick McCray. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we talk. That's why we talk. You gotta know what each other's thinking. I love it. I love I, it. I'm, I'm doing Beckett tomorrow night with them. You ever see the movie? No. Which movie? Beckett? No. It's, a, it's, a, it's a uh it's a very old night movie with with uh peter o'toole very very good Ooh. okay it's cool. on tubi for free you can check that okay. out okay good to know uh, i have no. tubi for two weeks so. <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite peter o, peter o'toole movie is lion in winter if you've ever seen it. it has anthony hopkins in it um with the most famous death obviously uh, Josette Dupre Collins. She marries Jeremiah Collins. She's still in love with uh, Barnabas, but she's gonna she's gonna get put under a spell, and she's gonna jump to her death. I love how they use John that Jonathan's voice is used. Um, that Angelic uses Barnabas's voice. I sort of my biggest thing is, and this is interesting too. It has nothing to do with her death specifically. I always go back and notice one thing about 1795. When they're doing the another voice over for like Jeremiah's taunting Barnabas or supposed to be taunting him, they don't use the actor's voice at all. They don't use 
Yeah, they're going. Anthony George's voice at all, which I'm like, well, wait, he was still there. Right, right. <laughs> um, right. But what did, you, what did you think of Josette's death off Widow's Hill, the cause of it? Angelique, the, the, the baddest witch on earth. It, it irritates me so much to watch because they fell for it. They fell for it. That's yeah. just the, you know, yeah. she, they were so close and she was, she knew, she knew what being with Barnabas meant. She knew, I, I, I think she knew, maybe, maybe not the entire magnitude, but you know, when they, when they meet in the mausoleum, it, she, he was like, Joe said, I died and now I'm back. What do you, what do you make of that? Yeah. And she's like, I don't care. She's like, I, I know that if I have to be with you, that means I have to die. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. You know, whatever that means. I don't care. I'll go to the ends of the earth with you, whatever. I'll be whatever it takes. So I, I feel like she had some kind of idea what it was going to be. Yeah. And Angelique, Angelique showed her the, the not so kind picture of it. But I feel like that wasn't all... Barnabas's life was as a vampire you know it wasn't all you know drinking blood and because he, he loved very deeply you know yeah. and yeah. and I I feel like I feel like being a vampire it it, it fueled it a little more it, it exemplified it, it, it of course that's a natural nature so I it makes me it makes me so mad that that Josette fell for it and but, Literally fell. She didn't jump. Right. She fell. I, I think she, she, she slipped. She fell. <laughs> Getting away from Barnabas. But but I do appreciate when when Barnabas goes back looking for Vicky to save Vicky, he changes that whole thing. You know, yeah. he he sends he sends Natalie instead of going himself because she. Or no, hang on, hang on. Was that that was in that was in eighteen ninety seven when he when he went to the past again to follow Kitty. Back he, in Naomi, yeah, he sends Nat. He sends Natalie yeah. because he he knows if he goes that she'll jump. Right, right. right. He's supposed to. <laughs> yeah, she's supposed to meet. I believe she's supposed to meet him. I think in the old house, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah. And well, that never happened. <laughs> no, no. Joseph ends up killing herself anyway, and and it's but but I thought it was really smart on Barnabas's part because. You know, he could have easily gone to Josette and it all happened all over again. But yeah. he was smart enough to send Natalie and and keep her from jumping. And I, I kind of wish he had been that smart the first time. <laughs> because I feel like I feel like her death may have been avoided. But and kind of like speaking of Natalie though, I mean, being Josette's aunt and everything, I feel like Josette kinda already had because Natalie was so into that macabre and you know, reading into the future and stuff like that. Yeah. I think Josette could fathom it a little more, even though if she didn't completely understand what was going on, like you were saying. Right. She had heard all this crazy crap from Natalie her whole life. Right, right. That something could be believed, even if you didn't fully understand it. Right. But And all she, you know, she loved Barnabas, and that's all that, that mattered, and she was willing to take the chance and, yeah. and make the sacrifice. And yeah. I don't know. Even if, yeah. So yeah, I, I, it was it was irritating to watch her fall for Angelique's crap, and then and then to watch Angelique laugh about it as Barnabas is just you know in shambles over it. Which is, oh, man, <laughs> Every man. time you hear that Angelique laugh, he's like, <laughs> like, come here, girl, I'm gonna ring your neck. Like, but I love she got you. away with something. <laughs> but I love her. I can't help it. <laughs> yeah, I know. She's the, the two most infamous laughs in horror. In horror. Of the shadow and Angelique. Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> so, yes. But be the Joker, but I don't. That's not really horror. <laughs> no, Joker is horror. <laughs> like, well, that's the thing too. Like the Joker has a unique laugh, though. Too, when you hear it, everybody has their own. Ver like Mark Hamill has his version. Heath Ledger had had his. Yeah. So, and even like uh, Nicholson had his own. So it's really. Yeah. Uh, the guy who played him in the 60s, I'm probably going to butcher his name, R Ramiro. Or, uh, oh, Cesar Ramiro. Cesar Ramiro or Cesar. Yeah, he even had his own. So it's really cool that every Joker had their own iteration of a laugh. It wasn't okay. the same. <laughs> so that's nice. a pretty unique. 
gave us Batman and yes. they gave us Dark Shadows. I know, the okay. best year in television. <laughs> <laughs> Batman and Dark Shadows. <laughs> the 60s was a good time. Yeah, um, was. <laughs> with There is maybe a deserving participant. In 1840, uh, or yeah, 1840, Samantha Collins, Quentin's wife, uh, gets gets thrown off. <laughs> Still, thank God, um, she yes. she did she did murder uh, Joanna, yeah. Quentin's love. Yeah. So, is how scale one to ten? How deserved is her death? You know what? She was one that I wasn't sad about, and I felt bad that I wasn't sad. Yeah, but she had wrecked so much havoc. And then when I found out she killed Joanna, I'm like, oh, bye, bitch. You know, it's yeah. just like, I'm just like, <laughs> I just she yeah. Like Joanna didn't touch her. She just, you know, she just showed her true self and that was it. She, like, she kind of fell off too, you know. Yeah. But <laughs> like you wanted to feel so bad for Samantha. And I did. For a while. But man, everything it kept She's getting so, revealed more and more. Yeah. Like, hmm. So dastardly and, and so so petty. Like you, you and know? Quentin kind of deserved each other. <laughs> but yeah. Like, so I, I don't know. I, just, I don't know. Yeah, I would. I wish I could have been more sad about her death. Me too. Um, but but it was. I think it was one hundred percent deserved after killing Joanna, after pretending to be Joanna, and it just. I'm over it. Yeah. <laughs> but a any any time I'm watching like Halloween too, and I watch Michael Myers stab this nurse in the back, I'm thinking, why can't you just go back in time and go to Dark Shadows and do that to Samantha? Yes. <laughs> like everybody would just be happy. Um, <laughs> why why Gerard hung on to her for so long? I'm like, what use was she, was she? Honestly. Well, he's I do like the fact that you have Gerard staff slash Judy Zachary conning her into like doing all this stuff to get Quentin to the gallows. Yeah. So he's he's basically using her as a front. Like he's using her to make sure the job that gets done yeah. but she has her own demons too and he would i think even judah was to the point like you know what you got a lot of baggage girl go ahead that's true totally yes totally yeah i, I mean yeah i think totally. you just saw in her she had what it took to it's like now you're becoming a liability you're no longer really much of you much use to me anymore yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, at that point, like he's got Charles Dawson on his side, so it's like you know right. what, my, my my boy Charles Dawson's over here. You can go. You know what? Some ghost wants to kill you. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go for it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing too. Like when you have when you have two villains, when you have two villains who are working together, you're just yeah. waiting for one of them to stab one in the back, and. Judas Zachary, he saw a means to an end, so it's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it was Mercy. she was easily disposed of, and he didn't have to do much to it. So, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> what did you say? Now she doesn't jump off with this hill, but she comes close, and we touched upon her a bit. What did you think of? Because it's during Jason McGuire. What did you think about Elizabeth? How the widows are calling to her to jump. This was really, really dark and really interesting. Definitely. <laughs> I, I, the first time I saw it, I'm thinking to myself, as I, you know, as we're hearing the widows calling to Elizabeth, Elizabeth, oh you know, God, yeah. and I'm thinking, surely not. Sure, this woman, she has been so strong so far in this show. Surely this is not going to be the way she's going to go. It yeah. can't be. And, excuse me, get down, please. Get down. <laughs> but <laughs> and then when she, love me. I know <laughs> they do, especially my cats. My gosh. But <laughs> she gets to Widow's Hill and she even gets a running start. And as soon as she's ready to take that first run, you know, Vicky goes, Mrs. Stoddard. And I thought I thought it I thought it was over. I thought she was gonna go over. Yeah. And I, I think I think had if Vicky had gotten there even one second later, it would have been over. She would have done it. I d I don't know. It shocked me. As much as I hate it, I mean, after everything, maybe Elizabeth was or is meant to be that poor girl. Yeah, maybe as much she as I is hate it, but every single time, I mean, it was more than once. Yeah. 
And and, and the fact the fact that Jason bullied her and tormented her so much to that, death to just about yeah, literally <laughs> to, to death. death. If if Vicky hadn't been the voice of reason and pulled her back, Jason McGuire would have been the reason she would have gone over. She she wanted to not marry him so badly that she was ready <laughs> to end her life over it. God, how horrible is that? <laughs> and I mean. I mean, instead, she takes the better way out and, you know, she wants to not marry him so bad that she just blurts out, you know, everything incriminating about herself in front of a judge. I'd rather spend it in jail than (laughs) die for you. So, I I, I mean, what what, what went on behind, even behind the scenes with Jason McGuire that just made her so suicidal, you know? I, I mean... It's incredible. Mm. Granted, if it were me and I and, and I was forced into being married with Jason, I might have gone the same way. <laughs> but yeah. uh, no, thank you. Mm. I, I'd have been Elizabeth. I'd have pulled out Roger's revolver, pleaded insanity. Uh, <laughs> That's what Karen was going to do. Why, why did you think of that? <laughs> she was going to shoot his own wedding. <laughs> Okay, Carolyn's got the gun. She's been taking the Lamont Cranston school of how to sh- pull the trigger. And <laughs> she's going to pull the trigger, too. I'm thinking, yes. yeah, this, this girl's ready to go. I don't think she would have missed, either. I no. Don't. no <laughs> she, she's got that gun soaked, and she's got it in the bag like like a muzzle. So yeah. I don't, like she's got like a silencer, in a sense, where <laughs> the gun's not even going to be heard. He's just right. going to fall down, and I bet she's just going to hide the gun. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> she had this all planned out. <laughs> wow. If, if, you, if you need an assassin, Carolyn's your yeah. daughter. Uh, right? There's two people who save uh, Elizabeth, Victoria and Barnabas. And I like how Barnabas comes up behind her. Uh, he realizes what's going to happen. He has seen this scene all too real, oh, too yeah. much. Yeah. And you can tell he has. And he tells Vicky, he goes, someone's got to watch her. She, yes. she might go back up there. And, and that's when Vicky, I think, tells him. She goes, yeah, I caught her up her too. And <laughs> Barnabas is like, my God. Like, he's like to the real estate. Like, and it, it really, like, Dennis Patrick plays a great heel in Jason McGuire. And this just paints him as an even bigger heel. Yeah, definitely. I think Mrs. Johnson caught her up there too. <laughs> bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Yeah. Sorry. Bless you. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Colin has been horrible this year. It really has. <laughs> My wife is at work. She must be thinking about cleaning or cleaning. Because <laughs> start to sneeze. Um, okay. so <laughs> I think that's true. This, so. <laughs> I told Kara, I was like, why do I clean my house when we do it when we see Jules? I'm like, he's gonna see my house. <laughs> Here's the thing, I got all my dishes done earlier. And Julie Julie comes wakes up, dirties more dishes, and she goes, I made some more dishes for you to clean. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'll get right on that. <laughs> so Good times, good times. Um, that's my adulting for the night. <laughs> right, right. It's like that's the thing. Like uh, when I'm cleaning, I listen to podcasts while I'm cleaning because most podcasts are over two hours long. Exactly. Like, uh-huh. well, if I listen to a song, it's over in five minutes. Exactly. Uh, well, hopefully, we'll have a new one for you to clean to very soon. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when I'm not listening to you guys or Penny, I usually I usually listen to um, what ha- a wrestling podcast called "What Happened When" with Tony Schiavone. He's a wrestling announcer. He was a wrestling nice. announcer. Nice. So I listened to him and Conrad Thompson talk about what happened behind the scenes with WCW when mm-hmm. they were out when Tony Schiavone was announcing there. He actually started in the uh, NWA announcing, which was Jim Crockett Promotions. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> so, so I give a little. I'm a wrestling nerd, so. That's um, cool. <laughs> I dig it. <laughs> male soap opera. Um, <laughs> what it is? Uh, with with dark shadows, with the widows of Widows Hill, the legend itself is just creepy. It builds all the ghost story you would want, and it adds really to the house itself being haunted. It really does. It. Dark Shadows built a nice, steady 
ghost story. You have the widows of Widow's Hill. You have, and even Josette having, you know, haunting. She doesn't haunt the hill. She haunts the old house. The old house, right. yes. And I like that because it doesn't, though her death is on Widow's Hill, she's not exclusively to Widow's Hill. Right. 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 And I, I wonder if it's because the old house, before Angelique started her witchcraft, I wonder if it's because the old house was the last place she was happy. Yeah. You know, I, I just, or if that's her unfinished business because she was supposed to live in that house with Barnabas. I don't, I don't know. Good. I don't know. Both. So both. Yeah. That's my, that's my theory. Yeah. What did you think about the head of Judah Zachary surviving being thrown off by <laughs> Stop. That's when I knew that head was going to be trouble. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like we already saw this with Adam. Adam survived, and now this head sur- <laughs> This head's going to be trouble. I mean, okay, <laughs> Judah Zachary at least had the reputation of being the most evil man alive. <laughs> True. So, like that kind of explains it a little bit there that he had some power. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's that's true. That's true. <laughs> I I could believe that head would survive more than superhuman Adam. Yeah, I mean, just because of who Judas Zachary was. Good lord! Oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry. What, what even hurt when it came back? No, didn't even like have any scratches. Like, did that box even break? So, no, you know. the box was. Oh Char- my god! Charles, Charles Dawson having the box in hand and showing it to Gerard Styles <laughs> is just classic. It's not like you carried it back in like, by the hair, hair of its head. Like, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it was still pristine in its little case. Oh, the, Lord. The, oh, the, God, the, two best pitch, the two best pictures are, are when Desmond first brings the head into the house. He's like, look what I got. And then you have, <laughs> then you have Charles Dawson show, show who the, like, oh, hey, you, you forgot something. Like, hey, you look at this. Something. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, like I love me some Humphrey Allen Australia. It's like, dude, can you be any more sadistic here with that severed head in your hand? That that big old, you know, that big old, you know, hundred teeth, you know, in his mouth. Like, the oh my thing, gosh. The only thing worse he could have in his hand is the pin, the Hellraiser puzzle box. It's like, oh my gosh, yes, true, yes. I I have a video request for you two. Okay. The can you give me the top five or three Dark Shadows characters most likely to have the Hellraiser puzzle box? Oh my God, Dad, Quentin would have it for sure. He's on my list. I named him once. Eighteen ninety-seven, <laughs> Quentin. Yes, uh, but eighteen forty, Quentin too. Stairway yeah. through time. I think, I think he would have had it. I think Evan Hanley would have had it. Yeah. yeah. Not uh, Nicholas Blair, but Evan Hanley specifically. Professor Stokes. And Professor Stokes. <laughs> For sure. I love those lists. And, 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 and this is a little bit off the wall, but I think Magda Rakosi. Yeah. Magda, yeah. <laughs> I, For that I matter, think, Natalie. Yeah. I, but those are the top three, yeah. I cheated. I did two lists for on my channel. And I had I had David Collins as the number one suspect. Because I remember how evil David was when he's a kid. True. Like David was David was sadistic. I, I did forget. I did actually forget to put Judas Zachary on there. And the head the guy who was the, the head of Judas Zachary on Twitter, he's like, ah, <coughs> you forgot about me. I'm like, Yes, I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry. Right. <laughs> Don't curse me. Uh but yeah. We're gonna have to expand this list, like maybe like top five or six. <laughs> <laughs> it's, expand your list. So you do not get contacted by a severed head on Twitter. Um, exactly. Don't make my mistake, for God's sake. Um, <laughs> ladies, I have no more questions for you. Is there anything you want to add? Oh, my gosh. Is there anything we left out? Hang on, I'm thinking. I'm I know. Thinking, I'm thinking. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Oh, do we think that Widow Hill is the reason that Collinwood is such a hell mouth? That the the grounds? Do we think that is that where it all began? Hmm. I think it began on the grounds itself. So Widow's Hill is a part of that. So do what, we think it would happen because of the grounds, or is it? I don't. I know. think it, I think it's 
I think it is the ground itself. So Widow's Hill is a part of that. Whatever, look, we can say that the widows, the widows jumped because of three lovers, but whatever made them jump, it caused their spirits to stay there. They didn't move on with their husband, which is weird. Like when you think about the legend itself, they're saying, well, they jumped because of their husbands. Well, okay, why didn't their spirits just move on then? They didn't. They stayed there to haunt that hill. Right. So it makes you think, what's wrong with the grounds? True. That their ghosts stayed there. So I would say it is the grounds itself with the houses that are now built on those grounds. Okay. And do you think more overall, the widows, were they haunting the hill to get people to feel and do the, what they did or to protect people to not do it? Oh, good question. But, <laughs> but depending on who you are, I think it, I did a, I did a story on my channel with titled the widows one night at widow's Hill. I'll leave a link in the description box. If you haven't heard it, okay. um, it's a little scary, uh, but, oh. and there's an unlikely hero. I'll say in the story. So, but I think it depends on your soul. Look at Matthew Morgan. He dies because the widows were protecting, were following Josette's instructions. Okay. We have, look at, the widows exist, but they do nothing to stop Josette because Josette's death is fate. You can't change Josette's death no matter how many you try. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they also do nothing to stop Angelique. So I think the widows interfering is a matter of selection by them. They they're neither I don't think they're neither good nor bad. They're more a neutral entity that acts when they choose to. Okay, that's fair. I like that answer. Good answer. Good I like question. Answer. I like that. I, I would I would like to do a, a, a segment, maybe maybe on our show, maybe on yours, or maybe we can cross over and add it to both. I don't know. But just just about the grounds itself, you know, because there is so yeah. much to unpack there, yeah. you know, about about the grounds being haunted and, and you know, the the snowball effect that it has. You know, so like, let's go all the way back to the beginning. Yeah, let's go all the way back to the beginning. And then, yeah. what, are you doing next, what are you doing next Saturday? Next Saturday. What's the date? <laughs> I mean, calendar I think time. I, I think I know. <laughs> let's look at the calendar, guys. Let's see, 26. 26. I have nothing on the calendar, so. No, I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> cool. Okay, let's do it. Okay, 10.30 p.m., we good? Yes. Okay, <laughs> we're going to discuss the grounds of Collinwood. <laughs> yes. And awesome. it's going to be scary as hell. <laughs> yeah. I'm here for it. <laughs> It, 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 it's going to be fun. Links to Between the Shadows, the Dark Shadows podcast is going to be in the description box. Go follow these ladies on Twitter at Lady Mongoose, at I Don't Care 13. Go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I really do, I promise. I'm sorry. I'm done. Sorry. You, you could have, have the Twitter handle. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but I, th I think that one might be taken. I'm not sure. Probably, uh, probably. Probably. It probably. Actually, it's funny. I was playing Hunt Showdown, and somebody's handle was "I don't give a fuck if you die." Oh my god! <laughs> that was her handle. I'm like, I'm like Julie. I don't give a fuck if you die. Just shot me. She goes, yeah, "You probably deserved it." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It's an extraction <laughs> shooter. Everybody gets shot at. Um, so, <laughs> links to Between the Shadows and Dark Shadows podcast is going to be in the description box. Links to One Night at Widow's Hill is going to be in the description box. Go go follow these ladies on Facebook. Uh, Christine Pierce, Tara Tillis. Go follow their page. It'll be in the description box as well. Ladies, thank you so much for giving me your time tonight. Thanks, thank you. Thanks for having us back again. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoy your weekend. Yes, yes, see you on Saturday. <laughs> see you on Saturday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Okay. Bye.